This video is about cabin framing and foundation types for a sloped site. Now the footings I'm going to go over, they're pier, post, and beam, and continuous stem. And I'm also going to talk about the different types of floor joist systems. Now those are ranked most affordable and DIY to the more expensive and skilled. So the first type of pier, post, and beam structure, the simplest one is a shed type or manufactured home footing. Really, they just put block or concrete pads compacted on grade, or like here, they pour bags full of concrete to make the footing still on top of grade. The other type of pier, post, and beam footing is really where they poured a, a pier footing. And that's a cylindrical footing down into the earth below grade that you could see here. Sometimes there's a vertical column of wood going off that or the beam sits atop it like you see here. And then a floor joist system that sits on top of those beams or in line with those beams with a hanger. The other type of footing is a continuous footing with a stem wall. And really that's just a continuous footing poured and then a vertical wall is built on top of that. This can be used for basements. This can be used for dealing with grade and having a crawl space below. And to attach your floor joists on top of this, there's uh, multiple different ways. Um, sometimes there's a ledger, which you see here, and then they attach their joists to that ledger with hangers, and then your floor deck on top of that. Or there's a top plate on top of that wall, then your floor joists sit on top of that top plate. And in my opinion, it's, it's either or. I think it's faster and cheaper to build it with a top plate, but engineers like it with the ledger on the wall because that applies uh, pressure horizontally to the face of the wall and ties all the walls together and not lean and not rely on that top plate and the joist connection to do that work. Okay, so next is the floor joist types. There's many different options, but really it just narrows down to three. So there's traditional two by lumber, which you saw on the pier post and beam structure. Then there's engineered box trusses. And these actually have quite a bit of advantages, but they're not really straight. They don't create really a flat surface because normal lumber just curls and it moves and it's, it's not as rigid as uh, you'd like but there's plenty of opportunities where you have chases for ducks power all sorts of things then the other option is an engineered web joist and what this is this is like a perfectly flat structure um once you put the subfloor on it it is the hardest in my opinion the hardest subfloor you could have they usually have knockouts in it so power can be brought through electric can be brought through and they have all sorts of um, standards on hole sizes and hole spacings that you could still allow um, not huge duct work to pass through so you'd have to rely on fur downs for large ducts to cross these perpendicular or if you did a small duct system there's quite a bit of allowance for smaller holes up to like eight or nine inches yeah that's really it in a nutshell so if you have any questions feel free to leave them below in the comments and thank you for watching